they tried to tell us. The warnings were all there. But we wouldn't listen. Hey guys, David here. So Warner Brothers and DC have their second attempt at trying to expand a cinematic universe in this movie that tells the story of these ragtag group of just really, really bad guys going on a mission to hopefully become the worst heroes ever. And that is the movie, of course, Suicide Squad, starring Will Smith. And nobody else. Let's recap on some of those trailers that we got for Suicide Squad that we all so loved so much. First trailer, kind of dark and melancholic. Third trailer, kind of whimsical and all over the place. And then we got the middle trailer that was kind of like a combination of both. Sure, they were edited together very well and the music went along with them, but they were masking something that was kind of in plain sight. And now with the release of the movie, we're seeing the news come out that there was struggle behind the scenes with the director and the executives trying to figure out a tone. Apparently there's like two different cuts of the movie, all these different struggles. But let's not forget that we had that that entire time with those trailers. First one seemed like it was the vision that Ayer, David Ayer, the director, was going for with this rather dark and dreary type of movie. But then Warner Brothers stepped in and said, no, you gotta include some humor, you gotta get those reshoots, you gotta go for this tone, and hence we got those trailers with all that crazy music in them. And now as I watched the movie, I discovered that that was in fact the case because it felt like an abridged cut of what David Ayer intended for the Suicide Squad movie to be. The movie starts in the first 30 to 45 minutes, it's nothing but just like a montage of exposition for where these characters come from and how does Amanda Waller fit into all this and how she has control over all of them within this precinct that she has them in. Then shit hits the fan in the city and that's where Waller says, okay, we gotta assemble the task for a task for X and that's where she brings everybody together and therefore they go on the mission. And that's where the movie definitely picks up for me. But prior to that, it feels like scenes are just cut together and just shit happens and you just have the Joker thrown in there. Harley Quinn instantly becomes Harley Quinn through like these little like montages. They throw in color, like they just spout color like, like with an Instagram filter. And these montage like intros to these characters almost make me forget that there's other characters in this movie katana kind of shows up almost literally he's saying wait stop the helicopter i'm in this movie too so it all felt like a very jumbled mess mixed with a lot of things that i just personally didn't like like uh, harley quinn is kind of sexed up to a very gratuitous level that i just didn't feel very comfortable with but once they do go on that mission and they finally land into the city and then shit starts to happen stuff that has to do with enchantress and how she fits into this whole team and how she fits into the entire plot it was much more straightforward you had the team that had to get from point A to point B and they're interacting with one another and there's the whole risk of them going rogue and of course there's a contingency plan for that but even though I was liking the movie a little bit more than when it started it still had some lingering issues one of them is the one that I mentioned at the beginning where the trailers didn't really show you the idea of how much Will Smith was going to be in this movie which shouldn't necessarily come as a surprise considering that this is Will fucking Smith if you hire that guy you're not going to just put him in the movie as a supporting role he's going to be headlining the thing his name comes up first and the movie does not let you forget it he is in the vast majority of this movie more so than any of the other members of the suicide squad that sadly get a shaft to fit in more of will smith which makes me feel a little bad saying that because will smith is in fact a great dead shot i really bought into his character i love the backstory that they gave him with his daughter but that came at the cost of casting will smith who's going to definitely having his contract to say he has to have the majority of the movie centered on him and and all the other people in the, in the squad suffer. Like, I wanted to know more about Diablo, which does get his fair share of screen time and backstory, but just not as much as I was hoping for, especially when the movie progresses and we learn how much of a pivotal role he plays in trying to get shit done when it comes to his powers. And Harley Quinn, who is played rather well in certain spots by Margot Robbie and then there's other moments where I've, again it's not so much her as it is the way she was portrayed and told by maybe the director or maybe those execs in Warner Brothers who said oh just act sexy and she just kind of is that and even though her character wasn't necessarily deep Viola Davis as Amanda Waller she nailed it as well everybody else kind of a footnote to be brutally honest Captain Boomerang, Katana, Rick Flag, even Enchantress to a certain extent they are just there as personalities but they don't have that personality that makes them a squad and makes them feel like a genuine team by the end of the movie because they lack a little thing that this movie was trying to kind of borrow from its rival Guardians of the Galaxy charisma none of these people have chemistry with one another except maybe will smith and margot Robbie, but that's because I mean, there might be something going on behind the scenes there but let's say that certain words like friends and family is thrown at the end of this movie and i'm like how 
How? You didn't have any genuine bonding moments. There's none of that. Which brings me to the Joker, who also sadly I feel was kind of lackluster in this movie because A, he's kind of just cut into the movie. In fact, he's not even given like a proper intro. I was expecting him to make some kind of grand entrance because that's what the Joker is. They literally just cut to the Joker and then boom, there he is. And th that's it. And Jared Leto, I thought, did a serviceable job, but he just didn't speak volumes to me like Heath Ledger or even Jack Nicholson did. He's called the Joker because he jokes around. He's funny. This Joker's not funny at all. He's just sadistic without the level of charm that Ledger or Nicholson brought to their versions of the character. However, this brings me to a thing that I genuinely did really enjoy about this movie is that there's little nuggets of DC service, DC comic service, that I really thought that they were just going to omit. And I'm kind of glad that they kind of pushed, pulled all that in from like Batman versus Superman recently, or even from some of the comics that are very Suicide Squad related are going to be in this movie. And fans of those type of that type of material are definitely going to be pleased. Guys, there's plenty of other stuff in this movie that I wish I could talk about, but that'll make for a very long video. I'll just say this, that Suicide Squad was okay but it definitely brought me back to march of this year where i walked out of batman vs superman and had for the most part the exact same problems maybe the problem isn't so much that the writer or the director or even the actors it's the studio and in exchange we end up with a movie with identity issues just like batman vs superman didn't know what to do with its source material and oh my god did every scene in this fucking movie need its own song no matter how much i actually do genuinely love some of these songs they included in this movie it was <laughs> tremendously overbearing i give suicide squad a very high six out of ten i still haven't made up my mind but i feel like maybe i enjoyed batman vs superman just a tad bit more than i even did with suicide squad who i believe is actually the executives over at warner brothers they're the true genuine suicide squad because i'm telling you right now i'm declaring wonder woman the last straw there that's their final chance if they can't nail it with wonder woman after that hype that was built up with the recent comic-con trailer the ship has officially sailed for me. So if you have seen Suicide Squad, please let me know in the comments below, like and share this video, and do you think that there's any hope that Warner Brothers can get back on their feet to deliver a, an expanded universe that we're very stoked to see. Let's hope Wonder Woman succeeds, let's hope Justice League pulls through. Let's just, let's just hope. Thank you guys for watching. This is David, signing off. Take care.